education maketh the man and the nation. As we head into the final lap of the race towards general elections in Nigeria, we see that nothing has been said by any of our candidates for various offices about the shambles that today is our education sector. Section 18 of the Constitution provides government shall strive to eradicate illiteracy. And to this end, government shall, as and when it is practicable, provide free compulsory and universal primary education, free secondary education, free university education, and free adult literacy education. Although primary and secondary school education are largely within the purview of state governments, the federal government in the concurrent list in the constitution can also establish institutions for post-primary education. Universities can, under the concurrent list, be established by both the federal and state governments. Under the sixth schedule of the constitution, local governments can establish and maintain primary and adult and vocational education institutions. In addition to all this, under the Compulsory Free Universal Basic Education Act, Section 2, every government in Nigeria shall provide free, compulsory, and universal basic education to every child of primary and junior secondary school age. Every parent shall ensure that his child ward attends and completes his primary school and junior secondary school education. Section 6 of the Act states that the magistrate courts or other state courts of competent jurisdiction can hear cases relating to breaches of Section 2 and impose punishment. So how are we living up to the lofty objectives in our laws? So start with, according to UNICEF, the globally recommended funding for education should be between 15 to 20 percent of a nation's budget. Nigeria in 2022 diverted 7.2% of the budget to education. Now in 2023, it's back to 5.3, not far from where it was in 2021. UNICEF notes that this is far from the biggest problem. Quote, far too many Nigerian children today are not in the classroom. And for those who are, far too many are not getting solid education that can translate to good prospects for their futures. According to Peter Hawkins, UNICEF representative in Nigeria. Additionally, the president noted to, punch, to the punch edition of the 27th of October 2022 that 12 million kids are afraid to go to school. UNICEF has updated the number of out of school children to over 20 million as at October 2022. To compound things, it is known that in at least three states, public secondary school students do not even sit for West, the West African school certificate. As for our tertiary institutions, Nigerian universities are just emerging from an eight-month strike. Please join me in asking, why are all our politicians so silent on these issues that make it the man, that make it the nation? It's a very important thing. Yes. You know, recently I was watching news, CNN, basically CNN. There was this beautiful site I, I saw, and I thought to talk about it. The, new, the, the uh, current um, British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, this man went to, they were, that was the period where they were talking about the compulsory mathematics learning for kids between 0 to 18 years. It's compulsory in the UK. Once you are 1 to 18, you're a child, up to you must learn mathematics. It's compulsory, irrespective of your other your choosing career of interest when you are 18 years when you are done at age of 18 you can decide to keep studying mathematics or not now the 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 uh, prime minister of britain rishi sunak i saw him in a school they were having an exam like a high school or something he went there joined the teachers in distributing question paper like just trying to have an understanding or interaction with the kids i was now imagining can we have a president buhari or a governor, at least, don't come and change for some people, at least go to school regularly, just check on universities, go to secondary school, see what is going on there. All these politicians, many of them, if not all, their children are UK studying. Why are they sending their children mostly to UK, US, or Canada to study? Why? Why? I'm not saying they should not send their kids there, but there must be something that the UK government or the US government or Canadian government is doing right about education. So we, do, we are just we are joking with this. In some states like the Southeast, 
you have to literally beg some people to go to school. I think that was that was during the um, if you go to like Anambra, then they will tell you oh, boys they really don't go to school. They prefer to go learn trade. They don't understand the value of education, and perhaps we've not gotten the kind of education that will suit them, their needs. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the, I know southwestern states are really trend, especially Lagos. But when you go to the north, it's not even a question of education interest. You have a issue of insecurity. People are scared of sending their children to school, especially their daughters, so that they don't come and kidnap them and force them into child bride. So I, I bandits. I, I so it's a serious to, problem. I want to do a short poll now. Of all of us, four of us sitting here now, which one of our kids goes to a Lagos public school. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask him. <laughs> you can ask him. Let us, let us face ourselves and say these things. Which my child never, none of my children went to Lagos public school. Then let's take another poll. Mm. Of the four of us, which of us did not go to a public school? I went to public school. Uh, well, it depends public on the kind of, you know, they I have different grades of public Federal school. government is public school. Uh, yes, 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 even yes, even yes, in the federal government is public school. Yes, it's public school. But they yes, have different grades. We all went to public school. We had different grades of school. We all went to public school. We went to public school. Funded by government. Yeah, sure. Government owned. Okay, let's say government owned or government funded. Exactly. We all went to school. At some point, yeah. Yeah. So, So why are we where we are today? They will say, government will say, for instance, that uh, government cannot do it all. Um, but you can't do it all. Education is the future. They can create an enabling environment for policies to thrive that educators no, 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 can... No, the thing is that what you spend money on shows your priorities. Absolutely. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah, believe yeah. They don't for no proper funding. If you, if you believe in the future, that the future is yours, it's the children that you fund properly. Yeah. You must, when UNICEF says spend 20% of your budget, it is because they know what it will translate to in the future. I, I was reading a, a, a book recently that was discussing innovation in America and taking it from where um, the um, free marketers are saying, oh, it's private sector that is responsible for creating things like Apple, things like Google and all that and all that. And Mazukatu, the economist, was arguing, no, that's not quite true. Because if, if you see what America spent on education in the 50s, 40s, and 60s, on science education, mm. that what you simply found that was that by the 70s and 80s, they were going to reap the result. Today, you, the, the, the university st student in, 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 in America is doing robotics. Artificial intelligence. Additive, artificial intelligence. They're eh? solving problems of the future. They are solving problems. Even the arts position who are doing quite well. Yeah, to solve yeah, problems. Exactly. Yes. So you see our universities, first of all, there are 170 of them today. So mm. funding is a problem. Mm. It, there are too many. Yeah. Then you find, look, we have uni like here, which will be the best uh, massive Let's not lie to ourselves. They are science lab. Do they have reagents? Mm. Of course, they will have. Let's That's that they will have. No, mm. that regard, they will have. Our problem is beyond this. No need for us to. <laughs> we'll go into the bad <laughs> yeah. We know we are talking yeah. about. <laughs> what we are flawed is right. It's, it's very simple. They are funding education. They are sending people to school, but it is their own people. Because the idea is keep the people impoverished, then you can use that as a selling tool to always come back. Yeah. If Nigeria gets enlightened, education is light. If they get enlightened, what will happen is the competition will get fierce. Nobody must compete with the children of the politicians. Yeah. Mm. It's so it's yeah. just it's trying it's to keep their yeah. people Again, in Again, they're power. weaponizing ignorance. Mm. You know. Exactly. So, yeah, Again, so it's there's no need for us to be saying why are When you see them going for campaigns now, you hear them say, Nigeria, Nigeria, Niger mm. is that a campaign? Mm. We'll talk very, about the issues. Very simple. But they know that the people they are talking to are ignorant. Well, I, I think if we can spend more in... Educa education is not only within the four walls of the formal institutions. Even if they can, if they can partner with the informal sector, see how they can galvanize them together, form an education institution. You want to learn about trade and what have you, other mm -hmm. skills. If they can learn these things, I, I believe they can solve the next 
generation problem in Nigeria. We can be able to solve our problem by ourselves, even before we start importing ideas out. So, who is next after the break? <laughs>